Hey everyone, it is Thursday, May 19th. The time right now is 2.05 p.m. And the temperature, I think, is around 13 degrees Celsius. I'm just gonna double check that on my phone. No, actually, it is 15 degrees Celsius. So it's warmed up by a few degrees since I last checked. And I'm here at Rosedale Station. And for this one, I'm going to go for a walk around an area known as Upper Jarvis. And then I'll walk through the village and find my way down to College Station. And this is Crescent Road, and that is Young Street straight ahead. The area in front of this station is undergoing a reconfiguration. And it was almost a year ago to the day that I recorded what should be pretty much the same walk. I did that one on a Thursday. Well, that was May 20th. Today is May 19th. And today is 15 degrees Celsius, and it was 28 degrees Celsius on that one I did last year. And I exited Rosedale Station. And I took a look over at Ramson Park. They made a comment that, at the time, people weren't allowed to play outdoor tennis or basketball. Although they still were. Those were the crazy times we lived in. So this is south down the east side of Young Street. And when I get to Church Street, I'll hang a left and make my way over to Upper Jarvis. And this is Almer Avenue. And that turns into Rosedale Valley Road. And that runs southeast. That actually forms the eastern border of the Yorkville neighborhood. Although most of Yorkville is on the right. That runs between here and Avenue Road. And I recorded a walk through Yorkville on the weekend. There's a monkey sushi. I ordered from them quite a lot or over the pandemic. They've got a location up in my neighborhood near Young and Eglinton.
think that place is pretty new. So I'm recording this walk 364 days later and just 10 minutes earlier than the previous one. And if you're interested in seeing how things compare, I'll link to that one in the description. There's Canadian Tire. Man, look at those gas prices, 206.9, 226.9 for diesel. On the right here is Davenport Road. And on the left is the beginning of Church Street. So I'll turn left here. We'll take a look over at the Masonic Temple. The scene where I saw my first ever rock concert. Back in 96, I saw the Foo Fighters play there. I think it was a month later I went back and saw the Gin Blossoms. So Church Street kind of goes diagonally southeast. Then when it gets to Bloor, We'll head straight south down downtown. Coming to an end just a block south of the Esplanade. So it doesn't quite go all the way down to the lake. It gets interrupted by the rail corridor. Is the north side of the Toronto Reference Library. That tall tower in the background would be one Bloor East. It used to be a popular Indian and Pakistani restaurant. I think it was called King's Place, either that or King Palace. Now it is Burger Delicious. And this here is Collier Street. Oops. Sorry about that. My gimbal just decided to take a nosedive. There's a notice on this building here to redevelop it into a 29 story property. So although technically we're in Yorkville, it's got a bit more of a Rosedale feel to it. I guess that's Lucky Sevens from a real estate price perspective is they're both rather high-end exclusive neighborhoods. I just want to take a quick peek down this last leg of Collier Street.
dermatology clinic continues to require masking. And it's back to Church Street. I think this building here in the corner serves as a homeless drop-in center. That's right next to Asquith Park. I'll be cutting through there. This is Asquith Green Park. And there's a look west along Asquith Avenue. And after Asquith Avenue was resumed, so it gets interrupted by the park. And we are back to Church Street. And I think I carried on in that direction, and then I went south at the next block video I recorded a year ago. I'll deviate from that. I'll go south here to Bloor and then we're gonna head east a few blocks over to Huntley Street. So this is Bloor Street East. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. And there's a look west along Bloor. On the left is the old Manufacturer's Life Insurance Company building, otherwise known as Manulife. And this was built back in 1925, and it was originally eight stories. 
and 12 more floors were added in the, sim or the same style as the original building. And that was added in 1953. I've always found the grounds and landscaping at this property to be extremely well done. I haven't seen these gates open in quite a while. It's probably a security guard watching me now. And across the street is St. Paul's. That church there was built, I think, in 1913. Although the original church before it dates back to the 1840s. St. Paul's Anglican Church. And this used to be the north end of Jarvis Street, but now it is Ted Rogers Way for a few blocks, and it turns into Jarvis Street. And there's a look south. All right, the lights about to change all across here. That is the headquarters of the evil empire, Rogers Communications. And this complex on the right was completed back in 1992. And we'll be walking alongside the eastern portion of that property. And this would be Mount Pleasant Road just below here, or Mount Pleasant Road. This is a fairly major arterial, and it comes to an end just south of here. It merges onto Jarvis Street. It goes north all the way up to the Eglinton and Lawrence neighborhood. And here is Huntley Street. So this area is known as Upper Jarvis. And that's bordered by Bloor Street to the north, where I just was, and Wellesley Street to the south, and Jarvis Street to the east, or rather to the west, which is right there, and Sherburne Street to the east, which would be the next major street on the left that runs parallel to this. And if the name Huntley Street rings a bell, that's because there's a long running a daily Canadian TV show called 100 Huntley Street. In fact, it's the longest running daily show in the country. It's had over 10,000 episodes. 
It was named after a building that was just up here in the right. As it was originally filmed at the location 100 Huntley Street. Although I think it's produced now in Burlington. I've never actually watched the show. I think it's like a Christian daily show. There's a plan to put 48 and 59 story towers right on this spot. I would imagine these homes would have to be preserved to some degree. So this building was completed in 92, and I found a picture of 100 Huntley Street, only one. And that was on IMDB of all things. And it looks like the original building was right here on the right. As I was able to recognize this building behind it in the picture. So I'm guessing it was torn down in the late 80s. And a lot of these homes would go back to the late 1800s. That's all part of the Rogers complex in the background there. And this is Isabella Street. So this is on the east side of downtown. There's some confirmation that we are in Upper Jarvis, established in 1824. And this Building on the right, I believe, is part of the Casey House. And that's a facility that cares for people living with HIV. And it was founded back in the late 80s. Here is 10 Huntley Street. View available suites online. And like a lot of apartments in the city, it looks like there's plans to cram another building on this lot. In this case, it would be a 29 story building. And right here is Earl Street on the left, and I think Earl Place is on the right. And here's an instance of a traffic calming measure in downtown. I'm not sure if this has always been here, but I took a look on Google Street View. And it's been configured this way since at least 2007. So it's split into one-way streets running in the opposite direction. So that prevents through traffic and sort of ensures that any vehicles using this little street are here to either visit one of these properties or turn around because they went the wrong way. And 
And that's the type of design they really need to use in the suburbs instead of winding cul-de-sacs that sort of loop all over, which were also designed with the intent of preventing through traffic. But the side effect of making the neighborhoods entirely unwalkable. All right, so we are at Jarvis Street. That looks like I'm gonna be forced over to the other side of the street here. Or not, I could probably walk along that side, although that construction guy just directed me to cross the street. West of Jarvis, it becomes Gloucester Street. So I think I'm gonna find my way over to Barbara Hall Park and we'll cut through that. So this is south, down the west side of Jarvis Street. This building here used to house the Berkeley Bicycle Club. That was an old event space. And that closed up during the pandemic. Seems to be some sort of project here now. And the Keg Mansion is across the street, and just south of here is Wellesley. I'm going to head west here along Coffer Square, and this will lead us into Barbara Hall Park. Park takes its name from the 61st mayor of the city of Toronto. And our second female mayor, the first one preceded her, June Rollins. And Barbara Hall's time as mayor was short-lived as after three years the mega city was formed and she lost that race to Mel Lastman. There's an off-leash dog park. And this here on the left is an AIDS memorial. And the names of those lost to the disease are etched on these plaques here in the park. There's a plaque honoring an early medical leader in the fight against HIV and AIDS. And this will lead us up to Church Street and take us into the heart of the Church Wellesley Village. And that's bounded to the north of here by Charles Street and to the south by Gould. That's right in Ryerson University. Young Street to the west and Jarvis Street to the east just behind me.
and it's back to Church Street. And there's a look north. And in a few weeks from now, this whole area is going to just really start to come to life as it'll be the first Pride Festival in a few years. I think it's one of the largest and most attended of its kind. And I think that'll run from the first week of June or actually it might be at the end of June I'm getting my dates mixed up but if I remember I'll put the dates at the bottom of this video kind of holding a camera right now so I don't have the luxury to look it up. But this is Church in Wellesley. And Wellesley Subway Station is just off to the west. It's certainly starting to feel a lot harder, hotter than 15 degrees. I'm just refreshing the weather on my phone. Oh, now it says 16. It looks like the sidewalk patios are going to make a new appearance. Or rather, another appearance. That's something that's become a thing during COVID. Here is Maitland Street. I did a live stream on my e-scooter last Saturday night when I came up Church Street. About half an hour after I passed through, there was a hit and run incident where someone was standing in one of these soon to be future patio spots. I think right here actually. And they were hit by a vehicle and dragged up the street about a hundred yards. Actually, it was a block south of here. In front of a pub called Hair of the Dog. And there's a look towards Maple Leaf Gardens. And I'm not sure what the outcome of that was. I think they caught the driver. And in that video I recorded a year ago, I went south the block and I turned right on Wood Street. And for this one, I'm gonna head along Alexander Street here. Belt Street's named after Alexander Wood. I think 
fact, straight ahead once stood a statue of Alexander Wood. That was a bronze statue that was put in by the City of Toronto and the Church Wellesley Business Association or Business Improvement Association back in 2005. There's the North Up Church. And I remember walking by the statue and talking about it in prior videos, and it was right here on this spot. And it became to be known that Alexander Wood was associated with some of the country's residential schools. All of a sudden, the church, Wellesley BIA, despite championing the statue, were also pushing the city for its removal. And at some point, it got destroyed last year. So I guess everyone just shrugged and now there's no more statue. There's a look, a unique look at Maple Leaf Gardens. And in the 1800s, he was a very successful merchant who immigrated to Toronto from Scotland. And he was also one of the first prominent gay figures in the city. But now he's been cancelled. There's also plans in the works to change the name of Dundas Street. Rather than simply undedicate it or dedicate it to someone else with that name or just leave it in place as a history lesson. And straight ahead is Young Street, so I'm going to turn left here and head south down to College Station. In my original video, I think it was around 42 minutes. And this one's looking to have a similar runtime. It's the Alexander Street Parquet. And there is. Buddies in Bad Times Theater. I think they specialize in LGBTQ productions. Buddies in Bad Times is the largest and longest running queer theater company in North America. Although they didn't move to that building until 1994, according to that plaque. And it's the never boring Young Street. And straight ahead on the left, there's a documentary on a YouTube channel I watched called the B1M. And that's going to be the tallest building in the country, or at least one of the top two called One Bloor East, or rather One Bloor West. And that video talks a lot about the so-called Manhattanization of Toronto. Although unlike Manhattan, Toronto has ample land. It's just a matter of the city's zoning 
leads to a lot of low rises and then extreme high rises. They sort of pop up like first pimples along major arteries like Young Street. So I recommend giving that video a watch. And we are at Wood Street. And on the right of Young is College, and on the left is Carlton Street. There's a look at College Park. I'm going to turn left here and pop into College Subway Station. And that would be the 506 Carlton streetcar going by. Just gotta fiddle with my mask and get it out as I'm about to head into the transit system here. I think I've got it on. All right, so I'm gonna head down and hop on a northbound train and head home up to Young Eglinton. And in a few hours, I'm hoping to do a live stream. So there we go, that was Upper Jarvis, starting from Rosedale Station and the Church Wellesley Village. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. If you wish to support the channel, there's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description. Instagram account at Johnny Strides. And you can also now say super thanks. You'll find a link to that at the bottom of the video. And here comes the train. All right. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you on the next one. Line one, North Bend. Please stay clear of the doors. Station is Wellesley. Wellesley Station.